Welcome to the Script Mistress podcast, where we dive into storytelling's heart and bring screenwriting's magic to life. I'm your host, Amber Bosworth, and today we're embarking on an extraordinary journey. Well, not really embarking, I guess making our second step. <laughs> now, to keep yourself informed about podcast events and challenges, join my emailing list at thescriptmistress.com. Additionally, you can find this entire episode on video at thescriptmistress.com forward slash scene 5252, where you'll also discover a free download waiting for you on that page. And I'll discuss that a little bit more at the end of this episode. Now, I also have this whole thing <laughs> recorded on the Script Mistress YouTube channel, which I will provide a link for that in the, the show notes below if you want to check that out. Now, I do run a monthly short screenwriting challenge. January is now open for registration, and it starts in just a few days. It will run from January 17th to the 21st. Participants have five days to write a brand new five-page screenplay based on a prompt given on the first day of the challenge. The winner will receive $150, and every writer that submits a completed, completed script will receive detailed feedback right on their script, along with a coverage that I send out with it as well. All this is included in a $15 entry fee. Really, the entry fee is really to give back to you for prizes and um, to keep it going a little bit longer. I really do enjoy it, and I do give out $150 every month to the winner, and I'm really excited about that. You can discover more about that at thescriptmistress.com forward slash ink to screen. So don't miss out. Sign up now. It's going to start just a couple days, um, about two days on Wednesday. Now, welcome to week two of our exploration into the world of screenwriting. Now, last week, we embarked on understanding what screenwriting truly means. This week, we're diving deeper into one of the most critical aspects of screenwriting, formatting. <laughs> A well-formatted screenplay makes your script professional and ensures that your story is conveyed effectively to the readers, be they producers, directors, or actors. Now, a little disclaimer here. I know it's really hard sometimes to find um, spec scripts. And a little bit difference between a spec script and a shooting script, the shooting script is usually the one you find for free online. And that's the script that you get that has already been optioned. It has all the notes about camera angles and everything like that. What you want to work on first is your spec script. This formatting goes over all of that. If you would like to see really good examples of some nice spec scripts, please go to my website, thescriptmistress.com forward slash ink winners. There you will see a lot of examples of spec scripts of the previous entries into my challenge. I post it there along with their permission. I always ask permission that nobody has to provide their script. They can totally keep it for them. I don't take any credit or anything like that. I just want to post it and it does have their name on it. So go over there, take a really good look at a spec script if you're having any issue with formatting. Now, I know this isn't a very glamorous topic um, and it's a little bit different than if you're writing a novel or prose, but if you get down the formatting, your script will soar above so many others if you can just lock this part down. So let's get right in there. <laughs> The importance of standard screenplay formatting. Now, standard screenplay formatting isn't just a set of arbitrary rules. It's the backbone of screenwriting and is critical for several reasons. Now, let's delve deeper into why adhering to these formatting standards is crucial for any screenwriter. Now, there's industry expectation and professionalism. First and foremost, standard formatting is an industry expectation. It's not just a guideline or a suggestion. It's an expectation. When a script lands on the desk of a producer, director, or agent, they expect it to follow a specific format. This format isn't just about making the script look neat. It's about presenting your work in a way that aligns with professional standards. It shows that you respect the norms of the industry and are serious about your craft and the craft of screenwriting. Now, it also provides ease of reading and visualization. Now, just think about it. <laughs> All these act or producers and directors, they're you're used to this standard, to this norm. So adhering to that gives your voice a clear path to show your vision. 
Now, a screenplay is a tool for visualization. It's meant to guide directors, actors, and other film crew members in bringing a story to life. Standard formatting helps in creating a visual picture of each scene. The uniformity in the scene headings, action lines, and dialogue ensures that the script can be read and visualized seamlessly. This consistent structure lets the reader focus on the story and characters rather than getting lost in unorthodox formatting. Now, I do have to say, when I am um, giving feedback and reading some of the newer scripts and somebody doesn't have a very good grasp of the formatting, sometimes that's all I can see. And I try really hard to get in there because I'm providing feedback on format as well. So you just want to think of that when you're writing and you're going to give this to a producer or an agent. Don't let them get lost in your unorthodox formatting. Just stick to the script. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. It also provides good pacing and timing. The screenplay format also plays a crucial role in pacing and timing. One page of a properly formatted script typically equates to about one minute of screen time. This correlation is vital for producers and directors to plan the film's length and the scene's pacing. Deviating from the standard format can disrupt this balance, leading to inaccurate estimations of the script's length and pace. So don't do it. <laughs> now, clear communication of ideas. A well-formatted script facilitates clear communication. Each screenplay element has a designated place and format, from action lines to dialogue. This clarity ensures that your ideas, instructions, and storytelling are communicated effectively without ambiguity or confusion. It helps convey the story as you envision it, ensuring your narrative and character's intentions are understood. Facilitates collaboration. Screenwriting is often a collaborative process. A script that adheres to standard formatting is more accessible for collaborators to read, understand, and discuss. It creates a common language that everyone involved in the filmmaking process can understand and follow, making collaboration smoother and more efficient. So that's the importance of it. So now let's move into the specific elements of the formatting. So the first off, scene headings. A scene heading or slug line is the first line of every scene in a screenplay. It's a quick way to tell the reader where and when the following action occurs. It includes three key pieces of information, whether the scene is inside, interior, or outside, exterior, the location and the time of day, for example, exterior, city park, dash, day, immediately sets the scene outdoors in a city park during the daytime. Now let's break down their importance and the nuances of crafting effective scene headings. The basics of scene headings. Again, a scene heading, has those three elements. For example, interior, INT, period, coffee shop, dash, day, or exterior, dot, deserted beach, dash, night. The simple line sets the stage for the action to follow, providing immediate context for the reader. For the reader. I mean, just think about it. that exterior, deserted beach, night, says so much. That itself could be a whole paragraph of action in that one little line. Now, of course, you're always going to have, might not always, but sometimes going to have those weird ones or you're, you're in a car, interior, exterior. If you ever have questions, reach out on, on Facebook forums or, or Google it, or you can always um, join our Facebook group and ask that question. Some of those, like if they're really obscure, can be sussed out and kind of just thought through. Now, this also provides like clarity and pre precision. The primary purpose of a scene header is to offer clear and precise information about where and when a scene occurs. This clarity is vital for both the storytelling process and the practical aspects of filmmaking, such as location scouting and scheduling. A well-written scene heading allows the reader to instantly visualize the setting, enhancing the immersive experience of the script. Consistency and brevity. <laughs> Consistency in formatting your scene headings is critical. Stick to the standard industry format to maintain professionalism and ensure ease of reading. 
Brevity is also essential. Scene headings should be concise, avoiding unnecessary details that can clutter the script and detract from its readability. I have read a lot of slug lines like interior, the front of, or exterior, the front of this house, shambling house, too much. <laughs> exterior house night. In the action, that's where you want to use that time right underneath the slug line is where you want to get more into detail about the state of the house. Don't use your uh, slug line for unnecessary descriptions. Now, it also establishes tone and atmosphere. While primarily functional, scene headings can also contribute to the tone and atmosphere of your screenplay. The location and time of day can influence the scene's mood. For instance, a scene in dimly lit alleyway immediately suggests a scene, a sense of mystery or danger. So you add a little bit, a little bit of contrary to what I just said, but you can add a little bit of description in there. But if, if you can use that, maybe move it into the action line, that can help make your slug line more um, cohesive and, and good uh, and consistent. Uh, transitioning between scenes. I mean, when you have a new slug line, that usually indicates a new scene. Scene headings play a vital role in transitioning between scenes. They act as visual breaks, indicating a change in location or time. This helps maintain the script's rhythm and pacing, ensuring the narrative flows smoothly from one scene to the next. Special cases in scene headings. <laughs> so you should include specific information in your scene heading for clarity. For example, if a scene occurs in a moving vehicle, you might write interior car, moving day. Here you go. Similarly, a combined scene heading like interior, exterior, restaurant, and street night can be used for scenes that transition from one location to another within a single shot. Now, please, I, I know you, if you're listening to this or you're watching this, don't worry about writing this down. You can download the full transcripts of this um, of this episode uh, at the scriptmisters.com forward slash scene 52 if you want to see the specific ex uh, examples. Now, scene headings are more than just functional elements of a screenplay. They are the building blocks that set the stage for each scene. They provide essential information, help establish the mood, and ensure a smooth narrative flow. As a screenwriter, mastering the art of writing effective scene headings is a step towards creating a script that is both engaging to read and practical to produce. Think about that. <laughs> All right, now let's move on to the action lines. Following the scene heading are the action lines. Here you describe what's happening in the scene. Action lines are written in the present tense and give a visual picture of the scene. They are crucial for setting the tone and providing necessary details about over details without overloading the reader with information. Now let's delve into the intricacies and significance of action lines in screenwriting. Descriptive, yet concise. The primary role of action lines is to describe the, the scene's physical actions, physical actions, settings, and characters. This description should be vivid enough to help the reader visualize the scene, yet it must be concise to keep the story moving. Overlay lengthy or detailed action lines Overly lengthy or detailed action lines can bog down the pacing and lose the reader's attention. Present tense and active voice. <laughs> action lines are always written in the present tense and active voice. This choice lends immediately and uh, to the storytelling, making the reader feel as though the events are unfolding right before their eyes. For example, John dashes across the street, dodging traffic is more immediate than J John was dashing across the street and dodged traffic, or Don John is dashing across the street. John dashes. I feel, I don't feel, I know m most of my notes that I provide to my um, my challenge writers is the, the active voice. It is a huge, huge thing. And, and it's something that once you get the hang of it, like if you read a script and you catch something that's not active voice, then you, yeah, you will notice it and it will throw you off a little bit. So work on that active voice. Revealing character through action. 
Action lines are not just about physical moments, but also an opportunity to reveal character traits and emotions through action. How characters interact with their environment or other characters can tell much, much about them. For instance, Sarah hesitantly approaches the door, her hand trembling as she reaches for the knob tells us about Sarah's state of mind and emotions without explicitly stating them. I'm sure you've heard, show, don't tell. This is a very good example of that, show, don't tell. But also, we, a movie, we don't see emotions. We don't see what's going on in the head. We only see what's on the face and the actions that the actor provides or the character provides. So all we show, don't tell, and don't, don't give just emotions give actual actions how does that emotion show on your character how does anger how is anger portrayed by your main character how is happiness portrayed by your villain that kind of thing setting the tone and atmosphere Beyond describing physical action, action lines set the tone and atmosphere of a scene. The choice of words, the rhythm of the sentences, and the level of detail can contribute significantly to creating the mood. For example, action lines describing a spooky abandoned house at night should evoke a sense of eeriness and suspense. Pacing and rhythm. The pacing of action lines can significantly impact the overall rhythm of the screenplay. Short, choppy sentences can create a sense of urgency, tension, while longer, flowing sentences can slow down the pace and allow for moments of reflection. Skilled screenwriters use this to their advantage, varying sentence structure, sentence structure to match the scene's pacing. Visual storytelling. Here it is again. Action lines are the primary tool for visual storytelling in a screenplay. Unlike novels, where internal thoughts and feelings can ex be expressed directly, screenplays rely on action lines to show what characters think and feel. This emphasis on show, don't tell is a hallmark of effective screenwriting. Supportive dialogue, supporting dialogue and character development. While action lines primarily deal with physical actions, they also provide context for dialogue and character interactions. They can set up a scene before any conversation occurs or interspersed between lines of dialogue to maintain a visual narrative flow. Now, action lines are a powerful tool in the screenwriter's arsenal. They bring the screenplay to life, offering a window into the story's world and its character. A well-crafted action line advances the plot, and deepens the reader's engagement with the narrative, making it a critical skill for any screenwriter to master. Now, uh, kind of a little disclaimer, I've been seeing this um, over a few of the scripts that I've been reading and, and, and providing feedback is having the slug line and then going right into dialogue. This is a big no-no, big no-no, because you have your slug line, but what are the characters doing? Where are they situated? Set up the scene for the director. He has no clue unless you, he or she, has no clue unless you provide action. So never, never have a slug line and go right into a character with dialogue. Let us know what the character is doing. Set the scene, even if it's one sentence, even if it's two words, something to set up the action. Never, never go right into dialogue. All right, so down into character introductions. This is important. Now, first time a character appears in your script, their name should be in caps, all caps. Alongside, give a brief yet vivid description of the character. This isn't just about physical appearance, but also about showing their personality. So let's explore some of the various facets of introducing characters in a screenplay and why it's crucial to get it right. The first impression. When a character is introduced in a screenplay, this is your opportunity to make an impact. The introduction should include the character's name in caps and a brief but vivid description. This description is more than physical appearance. It should give a glimpse into the character's essence, hinting at their personality, background, or role in the story. For example, Jane, 30s. Sharp-eyed and perpetually poised, scans the room like she owns it. Economy of words. Now, screenplays are an exercise in the economy of storytelling, and character introductions are no exception. You have a limited amount of space to convey a lot of information. 
choose words that are evocative and telling. A well-chosen detail can speak volumes about a character's history, personality, or current state of mind. Avoiding cliches. It's important to avoid cliches and character descriptions. Rather than relying on tired tropes or stereotypes, strive for unique details that set your character apart. This makes them more memorable and gives actors more to work with when bringing them to life. Revealing through action. Sometimes the best way to introduce a character is through their actions. Showing a character during an activity can be a powerful way to reveal their traits, skills, or flaws. For instance, introducing a character as they skillfully navigate a complex negotiation can immediately tell us about their intelligence and persuasive abilities. Contextual in, in introduction. Consider the context in which you introduce a character. The setting, situation, and surrounding characters can all affect how a character is perceived. An introduction in a high-stress situation might highlight different aspects of a character than in a more relaxed setting. Setting up arcs and relationships. Character introductions can also set up future character arcs and relationships. Hints at a character's goals, fears, or conflicts introduced early on can pay off later in the story. Similarly, how characters react to, other, to each other upon first meeting can set the stage for future dynamics and consistency and clarity. Ensure each character's introduction is consistent with their role and importance in the story. Major characters typically require more detailed introductions than minor ones. Clarity is vital. The reader should never be confused about who the characters are or their significance to the story. Now, character introductions in a screenplay are not just about stating who appears in the story. They are about setting the stage for who these characters are, what they might become, and how they will capture the readers and eventually the audience's imagination. A well-crafted character introduction is a blend of precision, creativity, and insight and is essential for establishing a solid foundation for character development throughout the script. Now, one last note here too on character, try not to go overboard on the description because that in itself, you have to find a good medium because that in yourself, that in itself can actually limit the amount of actors that you bring in. If you're so specific about a character, how a character looks, um, then that can really hinder the director's ability to cast for that that particular character. And that could actually be grounds for them not even wanting to option your script. So don't do that either. Don't pigeonhole your characters in specific descriptions unless it's vital to the story. Dialogue. Now we get to the good part. Dialogue is where your characters come to life. Each line of dialogue appears under the character's name, centered and in caps. Good dialogue should feel natural convey character, and advance the plot. It matters not just what your characters say, but how they say it. Now let's delve deeper into the nuances of writing dialogue in screenplays. The character voice. Each character in your screenplay should have a distinct voice. Their dialogue reflects their background, personality, and current emotional state. A well-educated character might use complex vocabulary, while a street-smart character might use colloquialisms. <laughs> Distinguishing those voices is vital to creating believable and engaging characters. Advancing the plot. Good dialogue always serves the plot. It should reveal necessary information, advance the story, or contribute to character development. Every line of dialogue should have a purpose, whether pushing the narrative forward, revealing character motivations, or escalating conflict. Subtext and brevity. Subtext is a powerful tool in dialogue. What characters don't say can be as revealing as what they do say. Subtext adds depth and layers to your screenplay, allowing for more nuanced character interactions. Moreover, brevity is crucial. Dialogue should be concise and to the point. Overly wordy dialogue can slow the pacing and lose the audience's attention. Natural flow and rhythm. Dialogue should mimic the natural flow and rhythm of speech, but it's not about replicating exact speech patterns, 
screenplay dialogue is more structured and purposeful. It's about capturing the essence of how people speak while still maintaining clarity and narrative efficiency. Conflict and tension. Dialogue is an effective tool for building conflict and tension. Arguments, misunderstandings, and confrontations are often at the heart of a story's drama. Dialogue is critical in these scenes. The way characters speak to each other can heighten emotions and add to the scene's intensity. Ah, show don't tell. Again, a common adage in screenwriting is show don't tell, which also applies to dialogue. Avoid exposition dumps where characters simply state facts or background information. Ugh. Instead, find ways to reveal information naturally through conversations that feel organic and relevant to the scene, not just them looking in the mirror and, and telling everything. Ugh, not good. Reading aloud. Hmm. A valuable technique for testing dialogue is to read it out loud. This practice Practice can help you catch awkward phrasing, unnatural speech patterns, and overly long speeches. It also allows you to hear the rhythm and flow of the conversation, ensuring it sounds authentic and engaging. I mean, just listen. <laughs> I'm sure you, well, you've been listening to this podcast, and you can tell sometimes like when I'm, I've am i written out this entire podcast, but sometimes like I hadn't really said it out loud yet, and sometimes it sounds a little weird, and I have to change it up, even in just writing a podcast. So read that dialogue and make sure that it flows and it sounds right. Reacting and listening. Good dialogue involves reactions and listening. Characters should respond to each other in ways that reflect their emotions and intentions. This back and forth dynamic is crucial in creating engaging and realistic conversations. Dialogue in a screenplay is a critical component that requires careful consideration and craftsmanship. It's not just about what is said, it's about how it's said, why it's said, and what it means in the broader context of the story. Effective dialogue combines distinct character voices, narrative purpose, subtlety, and realism, all working together to bring the script to life. All right, now on to parentheticals. <laughs> Parentheticals are instructions within dialogue used sparingly to indicate how a line should be delivered or what the character is doing while speaking. They're placed in brackets under the character's name and above the dialogue. So let's delve into the details and best practices for using parentheticals because a lot of people use them, <laughs> maybe a little bit more than they should. <laughs> Now their purpose and function. The primary purpose of parentheticals is to provide specific guidance on how a line of dialogue should be delivered. This can include emotional context, physical actions, or tone of voice that aren't immediately obvious from the dialogue. For example, brackets, sarcastically, or brackets, picking up the phone, can clarify how the line should be interpreted. Sparingly used. One of the cardinal rules of using parentheticals is to use them sparingly. Use parentheticals, using parentheticals can make the script more straightforward and suggest a lack of trust in the actor's interpretations or the director's vision. It's best to include them only when necessary to convey the intended meaning of the dialogue. Brevity is key. When using parentheticals should be brief and to the point. Long or complicated parentheticals can disrupt the reading flow and distract from the dialogue. Keeping them concise ensures that they serve their purpose without drawing undue attention. If it gets too long, stick it up into the action or right after the dialogue itself, but usually before, um, stick it in the action. Um, you can even say she whispers conspiratorially and then have the dialogue happen under the action. Enhancing dialogue. Parentheticals can be particularly useful when the dialogue can be interpreted in multiple ways. They provide an opportunity to guide the reader toward the intended emotion or subte subtext behind a line enhancing the impact of the dialogue. Physical actions. Occasionally, parentheticals indicate a small action that a character performs while speaking, which is essential for the line's delivery. However, if the action is significant or occurs before or after the dialogue, it should be placed in an action line instead. Avoiding direction. 
It's important to avoid using parentheticals to direct the scene. Detailed instructions about camera angles, lighting, or actor movements are generally discouraged and are typically the director's purview. So don't do it. Nonverbal sounds. Parentheticals can also be used to indicate nonverbal sounds or reactions such as laughs, sighs, or pauses, which can add nuance to the dialogue and scene. Format and placement. Parenthetically, directions are placed directly below the character's name and above their dialogue. They're enclosed in those brackets. Correct formatting is crucial for clarity and professionalism. Now, parentheticals, when used correctly, can be a valuable tool in a screenwriter's toolkit. They offer a way to add depth and clarity to dialogue, guiding the reader's understanding of the character's emotions and intentions. However, their, their effectiveness lies in their judicious use. They should enhance the dialogue, not overpower it. I don't know if you guys have ever read Shakespeare. <laughs> there is no parentheticals in there because he provided the dialogue and some of the action, barely any action either. He provided that to give to the director and to the actors to take and interpret. Too many times nowadays is we we try to direct too much. We try to tell. You can't do that in a screenplay. The less, le the, less the better. All right, transitions. Though not as commonly used nowadays, transitions like cut to or dissolve to can appear at the end of the scene to indicate how one scene transitions to the next. So let's kind of take a look at those types of transitions. The most common transitions include cut to, dissolve to, fade to, smash cut to, and match cut to. Each serves a different purpose. The cut to is the most basic and frequently used transition, indicating a direct cut from one scene to another. Dissolve suggests a softer transition, often used to show the passing of time or a location change. Fade to, usually black or white, is often used to signify the end of a scene or sequence. Smash cut to. Uh, this creative transition links, no, I'm sorry, indicates an abrupt cut to a new scene, often used for dramatic or comedic effect. Match cut to, this creative transition links two scenes through similar visual elements. Usage in contemporary screenwriting. In contemporary screenwriting, explicit transition instructions are used less frequently than in the past. Today's scripts often rely on the natural flow of scenes and the editor's craft to manage transitions. However, when a specific transition is crucial to the narrative or that desired impact of a scene, it can be very effective. Impact on pacing. Transitions can significantly impact the pacing of a film. A rapid series of cut twos can create a sense of urgency and speed, while a dissolve to might slow the pace, suggesting reflection or the passage of time. Choosing the right transition can enhance the storytelling by matching the rhythm of the narrative. Now, guiding the reader's imagination. Transitions help guide the reader's and eventually the viewer's imagination. They can be a powerful tool in shaping how the audience experiences the story, transitioning them smoothly from one scene to the next or jolting them into a new narrative space. When to use them. The golden rule for using transition is to use them when necessary. It should be included if a transition is integral to understanding the scene or the story, a flashback or a significant time jump. Otherwise, it's often best to leave the transitions to the discretion of the director and the editor. Format and placing. And placement. Transitions are typically placed at the end of a scene, aligned to the right-hand side of the page. They are written in all caps to stand out and are often followed by a colon. Except for fade in. Right at the top of your script, usually fade in is over on the left, and then it starts your screenplay. While explicit transitions in screenplays have become less common, they still have their place in certain situations. Understanding when and how to use transitions can be a valuable part of a screenwriter's skill set, contributing to the overall effectiveness and readability of the script. When using thoughtfully, transitions can enhance the storytelling, guiding the audience through the narrative journey. All right, the last one, <laughs> the art of white space. 
A well-formatted script uses white space effectively. This means balancing dialogue, action descriptions, and spacing to make the script easy to read and scan. Scripts that are too dense or too sparse can be challenging to follow. So let's delve into that. So it really enhances readability. White space is crucial for making a screenplay reader friendly. A script cluttered with dense blocks of text can be daunting and challenging to read. Strategic use of white space achieved through brief action lines and concise dialogue breaks the script into manageable and visually appealing segments. This makes the screenplay inviting to read and more accessible for industry professionals to scan quickly. Pacing and rhythm. The amount of white space on a page can influence the perceived pacing of the film. More white space typically resulting from shorter sentences and sparse descriptions can create a sense of fast pacing, urgency, or tension. Conversely, less white space can slow down the pace, allowing for moments of introspection or detailed visual, visual storytelling. This control over pacing is a subtle yet powerful tool for screenwriters. Emphasizing important elements. White space can be used to emphasize certain script elements. A sudden shift from dense text to a line of dialogue surrounded by white space can make that dialogue stand out, highlighting its importance. Similarly, isolating a critical action or reveal can be more impactful with white space. Guiding the reader's eye. Proper use of white space guides the reader's eye through the script. It creates a natural flow from one element to the next, ensuring the reader's attention is drawn to the right places at the correct times. This visual guidance is key to ensuring that your script is read and understood as intended. Reflecting professionalism and industry standards. A script effectively using white space reflects the screenwriter's professionalism and understanding of how industry standards, of industry standards. It shows an awareness of how scripts are read and evaluated, signaling that the writer respects the reader's time and attention. Now, balancing detail and brevity. Mastering the art of white space involves balancing detail with brevity. While providing enough description to paint a vivid picture is essential, it's equally important to be concise. This balance ensures the script offers a straightforward, engaging narrative without overwhelming the reader with unnecessary detail. Formatting techniques. Using white space effectively involves formatting techniques such as appropriate margins, proper spacing between headings, dialogue and action lines, and avoiding overly long paragraphs. Each element should have enough breathing space contributing to a clean, organized layout. Now, the art of white space in screenwriting is about more than aesthetics. It's a critical aspect of script formatting that impacts readability, pacing, and overall narrative impact. A well-formatted script with appropriate white space makes a good impression and enhances the storytelling, making it a vital skill for screenwriters to develop. So in conclusion, right? <laughs> Finally, it's a long one. Understand screen, understanding screenplay format is essential for any screenwriter. It's not just about following rules. It's about presenting your story in the most straightforward, most engaging way possible. As we wrap up this week's lesson, remember that mastering format is like learning to play an instrument. At first, it requires cons conscious effort, but over time, it becomes second nature. Now, join us next week as we de delve into developing or the next episode. So next week, I will be releasing my interview with the winner of our short feature challenge. So the next episode for this, we'll be delving into developing compelling characters, a crucial aspect that breathes life into your screenplay, because where, where would we be without compelling characters? Now, remember, screenwriting is not just writing. It's a form of art where every element from format to dialogue plays a significant role in bringing your cinematic vision to life. And I want to help with that. <laughs> All right, the writing action for this series here. Review the formatting basics guide that I've provided for free. 
uh, download it at the episode page at thescriptmistress.com forward slash scene 52. This is just a one page guide that kind of points out all the elements that I just went over. Use this guide to go over any scripts you've already started. We all started from the beginning at some point. Feel free to share some of your thoughts or ask questions on the Facebook page at uh, ink to screen or email me at amber at the scriptmistress.com to get extra help. Now sign up for the next five page short screenplay challenge in just a few days at the scriptmistress.com forward slash forward slash ink to screen and practice, practice the formatting and get feedback. I will give you feedback on your formatting so that you can see where you might struggle and where you could improve. So thank you so much for tuning into the Script Mistress podcast. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, remember to just sub subscribe and share it with fellow writers. I'm the Script Mistress, and I'll see you next week as we continue our journey into the art of screenwriting. I truly value any feedback. If you have an idea for a podcast that might help in the future, email me at amber at thescriptmistress.com. Like and follow this show and talk soon. And until then, happy writing.